all the elements are. I think this is Hi there, welcome to Camping Secrets. I'm Marky Mark. I've got a real treat for you today. I've got the EcoFlow Delta II power station. Now this is the upgraded version from their original Delta, which was an absolutely game-changing power station. The specs are slightly different. Uh, the storage capacity's come down a bit, but there's a load of extras and the price is cheaper as well. It's much more affordable. I'm gonna take you through the specs here in lovely Sutton Park in the Midlands of the UK. Then I'm going to take it home, give it a full charge, and then see what we can power on it and see how efficient it is. But first, let's dig into the features of the Delta II. Okay, we're nicely ensconced here in the camper van in the middle of the park. And uh, we've got the EcoFlow Delta II here. And I want to go through the main features of the EcoFlow, how it differs from its main competitors, and sort of more importantly, how it differentiates itself from its previous incarnation, the Delta, which was one of EcoFlow's first power stations, and one of the best, it's one of our favorites. So let's talk a little bit about EcoFlow. They're a relatively new company, uh, founded in 2017 actually, and their first a couple of power stations were actually crowdfunded on, I think, Kickstarter or that sort of uh, program, Indiegogo or something like that. And the Delta was revolutionary, had extremely fast charging capability with uh, EcoFlow's extreme technology. So whereas other power stations might take five to six hours, seven hours to charge up on mains power, EcoFlow incorporate their extreme technology, which is around seven times faster, even up to 10 times faster charging. So something like this with 1,024 watt hours of storage capacity can be charged from zero up to 100% in about, about 80 minutes. That's extremely fast when equivalent size batteries are, like I say, about five or six hours. Another thing I really like about the Delta II and the original Delta actually is that when you're charging from the mains, there's no external power brick. That power supply to convert 240 volts into the voltage for charging the internal battery, that power brick is inside. The slight downside is you get some fan noise when charging and also the fans come on when you're driving large pieces of equipment at high power. But I think that's a small price to pay for convenience and having everything in the one box. As I said, there's 1,024 watt hours of battery. The original Delta had 12, 1,260, so the actual storage capacity has come down a little bit, but the price is quite a lot lower as well. I think at the moment the original Delta was around £1,299. I think this is retailing at £1,099. So, you know, it's £200 cheaper for only a little bit less uh, capacity, maybe 200 watt hours. I don't think that's a big difference, and I think getting closer to that thousand pound mark makes it a more attractive purchase really. For driving your own equipment once it's charged up in that really quick hundred minute time or even less if you're not going from zero percent, um, this can drive units up to 1,800 watts, 1,800 watts or 1 1.8 kilowatts. And that's a lot higher than other power packs that I've reviewed recently. For example, the Jackery Explorer 1000 is only a kilowatt of power. So this is nearly double that power. And that high power really expands the range of devices and equipment and appliances that you can power with the EcoFlow. Because let's face it, this is not only a great camping aid, it's also a piece of equipment that you can keep in your house and use if there's a power cut. So you want as big a range of items that you can power with one of these power stations. It's no good if it will only power a little cooler box but it won't power an oven, for example, or a microwave oven, or your TV. With 1.8 kilowatts of power, this will power a lot of household stuff. So we're gonna go around the house when we get back home, charge this up, and then see what it can power. 
In terms of battery technology, EcoFlow have got lithium iron phosphate cathodes. And we've done a whole video on this comparing it with standard lithium iron, uh, NMC or nickel manganese cobalt uh, batteries. Uh, the lithium iron phosphate in, in the EcoFlow gives a lot more charge discharge cycles than standard lithium uh, technology, around five times as much. EcoFlow say you can charge and discharge this up to 3,000 times before it, before the battery capacity has even dropped down to 80%. So that really extends the lifetime of these power stations using that lithium ion phosphate technology. The one downside of lithium ion phosphate is that the energy density is slightly worse than standard lithium ion. And please check out my video up there uh, to see that comparison. We'll check the efficiency of the EcoFlow in this video review, and that's really important. So by that I mean when it's fully charged, how much power is lost through efficiency of the inner circuits, the battery technology, the inverter, etc. How much of that 1024 watt hours is actually usable energy that's been stored that you can use to drive something? How much do you lose in that process? And in our previous test with lithium ion phosphate, we found slightly worse efficiency uh, than the standard lithium ion. So I'm really interested to see how do EcoFlow do on that. So uh, let's get the roving camera and just have a look around this device and see what we've got. Because it's a really interesting battery station with a few nice little extras. So on the back of the unit first, and uh, you can see immediately that we've got four UK three pin AC sockets. So that's really nice for a starter. You know, the Bluetti B70 only has two and the Jackery Explorer only has two as well. We've, all, we've also got a 12 volt cigarette style socket output. So that's 12 volt, 10 amps, I believe. And that will, you know, drive cool boxes or any of your 12 volt gear. Next to it, we also have some sort of regulated 12 volt with three amp max output outputs. I don't tend to use these for camping, to be honest. Uh, it's more the AC or the, the 12 volt cigarette lighter output. So what are the dimensions? Well, it actually measures 40 centimeters by 21 centimeters by 28 centimeters. Has really nice carry handles here and weighs a fairly meaty 12 kilograms. But remember, it's got that external power brick inside so that adds a little bit of weight obviously but i'd still rather have it all internally on the side we've got fans and we'll hear those in action inlets and outlets and then on the front there's a wide range of usb sockets so on the front we've got the main display we've got the on off button here and we've got around six usb uh, ports here we've got two standard uh, five volt USB A's. Then we got two of the fast charge 18 watt USB A types. And then we have two of the nice USB C 100 watt capable ports here. So these are great for charging laptops, modern laptops, and the like. And then we got a separate on off button to power just to activate those uh, USBs. So if we hold down the on off button, we should see the EcoFlow powering up. So there we go. And so what I really like on this display is that EcoFlow not only give you a proper percentage of how much battery life you've got left. Here we've got 29%. It also gives you a, a battery indicator sort of graphic. It tells you the input wattage and the output wattage that you're using. And what's really nice is it estimates how long you've got left at your current rate of discharge. You know, and that is brilliant information to have. So well done EcoFlow for doing that. Uh, your competitors would do well to uh, do similar on their devices. Um, operation is fairly self-explanatory. You plug in the appliance that you want and then activate it. Now we do have one more extra socket which is featured on the side here with a little nice waterproof cover what this is is an expansion port so as i said the delta 2 has 1024 watt hours of storage 
but really cleverly you can join in additional battery power to up your overall storage and this is a really nice feature and obviously the Delta 2 has got an inverter in it that 1.8 kilowatt inverter actually I, I forgot to mention that the 1.8 kilowatts that can be driven by the Delta 2 is a uh, steady state power it actually has surge power up to 2.7 kilowatts because a lot of devices when you first turn them on take a an a, a peak power and then settle down to a lower power so if that peak is above what a power station can deliver it will just cut out uh, before it drives the, the the unit but with the EcoFlow and having 2.7 kilowatts of surge that means you could plug in something like a hairdryer which will take a lot of power and then roll off and as long as the steady state power is below the 1.8 kilowatts the Delta 2 will have no problem powering so that inverter is one of the meatiest around anyway back to this expansion port so you can buy an, ex an expansion for the Delta 2 which doesn't have the inverter and all that in it it's just a battery pack but it's in the same size uh, same size box and then you basically connect that to here and that gives another 1024 watt hours so that would take the Delta 2 up from standard 1024 to 2048. And you can even get a bigger battery um, called the Delta Max battery, which can plug into the Delta 2. And that takes it up to something like 3040 watt hours. And that's the Delta Max. So how do we charge this thing up? Well, actually there's another little panel on the back here, which opens up. So on the back, we've got a solar input here. We've got a mains, sort of 240 volt input here with the power supply inside to charge up the batteries and on the right here this is just the breaker fuse I think in case of emergency also what you get with the EcoFlow you get some instructions and you get this little box which I haven't yet opened so let's do that now and see what we get in it this should have all the charging cables necessary to charge it up so right so we got a cigarette lighter here. Oh, and that's nice. So it's using the solar input connector for the cigarette lighter. So that reduces the amount of real estate you need to lose on the back. You don't need a dedicated input for charging. So this will go into the camper van 12 volt and we can plug it directly in here. If I can see what I'm doing. Like that. Actually got a 12 volt down here, so let's plug that in. Let's see if we get some power from our leisure battery here. So now we've got 84 watts coming in from the camper van leisure battery. So that's quite nice. So basically you can drive the camper van around with the petrol engine on, and obviously the alternator will then be charging the leisure battery. But at the same time, we can take that juice straight into the EcoFlow and charge this up while we're driving around. Alternatively, we can use a solar panel. And actually I've got a 400 watt solar panel uh, to use with the EcoFlow. So watch out for another video on that. I'm waiting for a sunny day to see what that can do. But the EcoFlow can take up to 500 watts from solar power, from a solar panel into it. So you can get really fast charging from the sun on a sunny day. So at 500 watts, you'd expect this to be charged in about two hours, which is pretty impressive from solar. That's at least three times faster than other battery packs. What else is in the box? Some silica gel to keep it nice and dry. Oh. And got a standard uh, kettle plug here. So that just plugs in here when you've got mains hookup. And boink. So that would be charging at home before you go away. And then, I don't know what that one is, where does that go? Okay, yeah, so this is just a 12 volt cable that goes in these regulated outputs. I think that's for like home electronics and, and things like that. I, I, I don't particularly know what those sockets are used for. And if anybody does know, please leave a comment because uh, I still haven't sussed it out. I don't have anything that uses these these three amp, 12 volt outputs. So what about connectivity? 
the display on the Delta II has one of the best interfaces I've seen with a lot of information there on how long is left remaining on the battery and how much juice it's using, etc. What EcoFlow have also given is a Bluetooth connection, which means you can use a smartphone app to talk directly to the EcoFlow and see how much you've got. And I believe you can even access it remotely when you're not at home. So, I'm going to attempt to do that now if I can find my phone. Let's see how intuitive it is. Okay, so uh, let's try and install the app. Just search for EcoFlow app. Install. Now I am in a park at the moment. I don't know what my signal's like. Oh, looks like we're 79 megs. So let's just skip through this. Okay, so let's open the app. I agree. EcoFlow. Uh, got to got to create a new account. Let's do that then. Okay. Okay, so now we're on the main screen. Let's add a device. It's found the Delta 2 immediately. Let's click on the Delta 2. Probably talking to it as we speak. Yeah, so it wants Wi Fi. So I haven't got Wi-Fi, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I thought it could do Bluetooth chatting to it, but I can't see it in the menu. Uh, down the bottom, use without internet. So let's see what this does. Oh, okay, cool. So it's telling me I've got 91 hours left. It's not using any power at the moment. There's no solar coming in. Let's plug that 12 volt charger back in. And then see if the app picks that up. Yeah, so I think if I log on at home on my home Wi-Fi network, then when I'm out and about, I can check back home on that Wi-Fi network to see what's going on. Right, we've got 41 volts. Oh, here we go. So 70 watts, 80, 90, 82 watts coming into the Delta 2 now. And the app is picking that up as well. So that's really nice. Now, of course, I'm using the juice from my leisure battery to charge up that, so it is going to drain my leisure battery. Uh, so I need to get the engine going and head back home, and then I'm going to get this fully. Then I'm going to fully discharge the Delta II, and then record how long it takes to charge up from zero to 100%. And then I'm going to look at discharge and see how much energy is actually stored in here compared with the actual headline 1024 watt hours. See how long it takes to discharge. Okay, let's head back home. Okay, we're back in the house now and I just wanted to test a few household appliances which can make use of the 1.8 kilowatt power of the EcoFlow Delta II. One of the best examples is a simple fan heater. Now, when I was testing the Jackery Explorer and the Bluetti EB70, the 1000 Explorer, um, this could only run on level one, which is about 900 watt power draw. Level two on this is about 1800 watts of power draw, which incredibly is the max average power output of the EcoFlow Delta. So in theory, we should be able to run this fan heater at full pelt from the EcoFlow Delta 2. So let's give it a go. So simply plug it in on the back, press the button to activate. So I've only got 19% left on the EcoFlow at the moment. Let's turn on the fan heater, level one. Oh, look, we're drawing 890 watts. Got heat coming out, fantastic. So that's level one. 
Let's go up to level two and see if we can draw. The EcoFlow fans have just come on, but they're not very loud at the moment. But let's turn on to level two. Well, oh, straight away, up to 1,753 watts per minute. EcoFlow's ramped up now. And I'm getting lovely hot air coming out of this fan heater. Maximum fan. But look, the power left is going down quite quickly. 16%. 15%, we've only got four minutes to run at this. Now I didn't have it fully charged and I'm gonna do that test in a bit. But incredible that we can run a fan heater at full power with the Delta. Now the Delta does get fairly noisy itself because it's driving so much power, its own fans have to come on to keep it cool. Um, but with the actual fan heater going, you don't really hear it, it's just more fan noise. Very, very impressive EcoFlow. Let's try some more household gadgets. So another nice household appliance, which you might take camping, is a microwave oven. And often these are notorious for power stations that can't run them because they typically have quite a high surge power before it goes back to the steady state. Because the Delta II has got such a high surge power delivery of 2.7 kilowatts, I'm really hopeful that we can use a microwave oven at full power. So I'm gonna put this cup of water into the microwave. We've got the plug for the microwave up here in the cupboard, so let's grab the Delta II. Okay, so let's, let's just put the microwave on, full power, and let's see what happens. So there we go, microwave at full power, heating our mug of water. So that is the EcoFlow fans coming on again. I think whenever it's over about a thousand watts, the fans come on to higher output. Reasonably noisy, but I don't think it would bother me too much. It's not as if you're gonna have it on full time at this sort of power. It's normally for short bursts and normally for fairly noisy items anyway. But that is very comfortably heating up the water. Let's stop that microwave now. Oh yeah, now nearly boiling water actually. Woo! Very impressive. What about a toaster? Now we've tried this before with the Jackery Explorer 1000. It worked with one side only. Uh, let's see if we can do both sides with the Delta II. All right, let's plug it in. Open nicely here. Yeah, so that's 827 watts there. Let's put the other side of elements on. Let's put the other one on, see if it works. Four thousand six hundred and forty watts coming out there, and all the elements are. So I think we can safely say that toaster works. Okay, so we've got a Powercraft jet wash here, which takes water from the water supply and then puts it through a motor and really increases the pressure. Let's see if the Delta II can power this beast. Plug in. Thumbs up for the Delta II. Okay, we're doing a spot of DIY in the house at the moment. Well, I say we, but Alison is doing that. Let's see if the EcoFlow can power this bad boy. Thumbs up. So actually the EcoFlow Delta II has really impressed me with what it can power in the house. I mean, some really high power hungry appliances, the drill, the jet wash, etc. What I wanna do now is uh, check out the storage capacity and the efficiency of the batteries that are used in the Delta II. 
So to do that, I've got to basically drain it to zero. Then I'm going to see how long it takes to go from 0% to 100% charging on mains. With the extreme technology, I'm hoping that's very quick, around about an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm going to be measuring that. And then once we're at 100%, I'm going to use this fan heater at full power and drain the Delta II from 100% down to naught and then work out the efficiency of the batteries and the unit as a whole. So let's get started. First, I have to get down to zero so I can do the start. So I'm just going to drain it now and then we'll get charging. Right, I'm going to put it on charge. Plug this in. Go. In. Okay, here we go. Power coming in. 40 watts, 300 watts, 800 watts in. So the, uh, the fans on the Delta II are just firing up. Now the specs say that the Delta II can take 1,200 watts of input power from AC input power. At the moment we're only at 550. I'm wondering if that's because it was totally flat. I took it down to 0%. So perhaps once it's got a bit of charge in, it will ramp up. You can see on the left here, saying two hours. Two hours for full recharge. My guess is that will speed up, as I say, once this power jumps up to a higher level after a few minutes. So let's see, let's do a bit of time lapse and uh, come back when we're closer to max. So we've been charging for about 41 minutes now and we're not even halfway done. So I can't really see that it's gonna be fully charged in one hour, 10 minutes. But that's what EcoFlow have said. So I thought the input power into the EcoFlow would ramp up from 580 watts up to about 1200, but it hasn't. So I've had a look at the manual, and they always say read the manual before you get started. And it appears that you can use the app to change the amount of power that comes from the mains into the EcoFlow. So I'm guessing that's why it hasn't ramped up to the full input power. So I'm gonna have a look at the app now and see if I can improve that. Let's have a look through the app itself now in a bit more detail. We're on charge at the moment and the front screen shows you roughly how long is left to fully charge. We've been going about 50 minutes now and it's saying another hour and four minutes to get fully charged. You can see where input power is around 580 watts and I was expecting that on AC power to be up towards the spec value of 1200 watts. And that's why it's taking longer to, ch longer to charge than EcoFlow say should be the case. If we were charging on solar, then the solar power would also be shown on this screen. If we click output, we're not actually powering in anything at the moment, but you can power devices and charge the EcoFlow at the same time. And if we were doing that, we would see some powers here. What's also interesting is if we go to the settings, there's a whole ream of things you can uh, configure here. For instance, we can change the name of the device. I guess if you've got multiple ones and they're all on your Wi-Fi network, then you'd want different names for each. You can tell it whether to have a beep on command or turn that off. And then we've got the charging speed option here. You can see I'm set at 1200 watts, but we're only limited to 580. And I really don't know what's going on there. What I do know is if I drop this down to something like 200 or 300, come out of the menu, 
then the device will change and now it has dropped to 300 watts as we can see on the front screen. So it is working but what it's not doing is going up to the full 1200 watts when I set it. So it's set to 1200, 489, 509. It's sort of inching its way up but we don't get beyond 580 watts. So I may contact EcoFlow about this to see what they say. So similarly with the car input 12 volt, you can change the ampage there that is taken in. You can also quite nicely tell it when to start charging. For instance, if you're on a solar panel, you don't want to keep charging, then you can tell it, look, if if you're above 50% don't bother charging but if it drops below 50 then start charging. X-Boost, this is the surge protection so we've got the 1.8 kilowatts of average power that it can deliver. With X-Boost you've get, got that temporary peak power boost up to 2.7 kilowatts which is really useful so I recommend keeping X-Boost on all the time. I don't know why you would turn it off really. And then there's various other options, timeouts, so you know if you don't want if you don't want the screen on all the time or you want to save battery, you know, you can configure that here. And uh, you know whether the screen times out on AC or whether you update the firmware. Actually I have got an upgrade due, so that might be worth doing because that might be the reason why I'm not getting full input power. I'm going to do that now, so let's see what happens. Let's upgrade the firmware. Okay, that upgrade's done. And the latest firmware now should start charging again. And we're still stuck at 580. Back to the main menu. Yeah, 580 watts seems like a hard limit. I'm definitely going to contact EcoFlow on that. So it's still an hour to go before we're fully charged. And we've been going around 10 minutes or so. Something strange has happened. The EcoFlow Delta 2 was charging quite slowly at about 580 watts for most of the first hour and 20 minutes. But then suddenly it went up to over a thousand watts. And now it's just getting to 87 and it's gone back down again. Right, the Delta 2 is now fully charged. I took it from 0% up to 100%, and it took about two hours and five minutes, which is considerably longer than the one hour, 20 minutes that EcoFlow say should be possible. Now, the reason for that is that it wasn't charging at the maximum power that it, that it can. Both the specification from EcoFlow, the user manual, and the app itself say that it could can charge at 1200 watts but I was getting about 580 watts from the mains going in hence about you know half of what is possible so really it took nearly twice as long there was a stage when it suddenly ramped up to over a thousand watts and I don't know what made that happen I was playing with the app I was I could sort of restrict the input power down to 200 watts 300 watts with the app but as soon as I put it up to over 600 watts, it would just limit at 580 watts. So, although I'm disappointed that it took about two hours to fully charge, I don't think that's unreasonable anyway, 
It's way faster than comparable devices from the competition. You know, I'm impressed. I would have been even more impressed if it had done the one hour, 20 minutes, 80 minutes that EcoFlow say is possible. And maybe it is possible. So I'm gonna contact them. I probably won't get a reply in time for the end of this video, but I'm very interested to know, is it something to do with our electricity supply or, you know, a configuration option, or is it just a, you know, not able to do that 1200 watts? Okay, so the next part of the test is to do a full discharge. I'm gonna use this fan heater. We've already tested it, we know it works, and it draws just under the 1.8 kilowatts. So we can run this and see how long it takes to completely drain the battery. And then we can work out the efficiency of the batteries in here to see how much actual usable storage you've got and how long it would last under most circumstances. So how long do I think that this thing will last from 100% down to 0% running this fan heater at about 1,750, 1.75 kilowatts? Well, we know this has got 1,024 watt hours of battery. The best power stations operate at about 90% efficiency. So if we go with that, 90% of 1,024, 1,024 times 0.9 is 921 watt hours. That's what I would expect this to be able to do. And if this is drawing 1,750 watts, we divide that 920 by 1750, and we get a ratio of 0.52. So it should last about half an hour. If I times that by 60 to get it into minutes, about 30, 31.6 minutes. So let, let's say 32 minutes. If that's got 90% efficiency, it should last 32 minutes. If it's shorter than that, it means the efficiency is worse than 90%. If it lasts, if it lasts longer than 32 minutes, it means the efficiency is better than 90%. And I don't expect it to be better than 90%. Um, so I'm really interested to see the results of this because the previous lithium ion phosphate power station that I tested didn't have very good efficiency at all. It was more like 70%. So if we can get anywhere close to 32 minutes running this at full power, I'll be pretty impressed. And I am impressed so far with this Delta II. Anyway, let's power it up and get going. Okay, I've plugged the fan heater in, ready to turn it on, we're at 100%. So let's go, full power. straight away the delta is predicting about what I said so I, I reckoned about 32 minutes 31 and a half minutes at full power 1750 and that would give a 90% efficiency if it lasts 30 minutes I'll be impressed and that'll be the first lithium ion phosphate power station I would have tested that manages to get close to the 90% if so, I think this will be going to the top of my power station hall of fame. Fan heater chucking out a load of heat here. Okay, so I'm recording this. Let's see if it lasts and doesn't drop off in power. See you soon. So you can see on the power meter that the fan heater is actually drawing 1,771 watts. And the eco flow is saying 1,748. So it's actually under reporting the power that's being drawn out of it. So when we do our calculations of the actual efficiency, we need to use this value, 1771 watts. I always like it when suppliers underestimate stuff. It, it makes you just feel a little bit more reassured that they're not over-egging their numbers. Okay, we're down to 50% now. So if we get the same again, we've lasted about 14 minutes. 
So if we get the same again on the second half, we'd get to about 28 minutes, which is under the 31 and a half that I calculated for 90% efficiency. 28 minutes, you know, would be a little less than 90%, probably 85. I, I can't do it off the top of my head, but we'll go through the numbers afterwards. But let's see if it gets to the 28 minutes. to the end now of the uh, discharge test still got two percent left one percent i think it's going to get over the 28 minutes which is impressive to be honest what i've liked about this power station the delta 2 is that the power delivery hasn't dropped off towards the end of the life it's de delivered a constant 1770 watts. I know it says 1748, but it's actually higher on the power meter. We're getting close to 29 minutes here. This is great. And it proves that lithium ion phosphate batteries can last and deliver reasonably good efficiency. Probably not class leading, but this isn't a shabby performance. Oh, look at this. It's, can it make 29 minutes? Come on, you beauty. 29 minutes. God, it's done so well at the end here. It hasn't just capitulated. Wow. 29 and a half minutes at 1,771 watts. So let's uh, sort that out. Well, that was actually pretty impressive performance from the EcoFlow. I know I calculated around 31 and a half minutes estimated time of discharge using that fan heater. And the fact it got close to it with 29 and a half minutes is pretty impressive, I think, for a lithium ion phosphate battery. Now, the Jackery Explorer uses NMC, standard lithium ion batteries, and they are slightly more efficient, and that got around 90%. This one, probably not quite as close to 90% as that but we can work it out quite easily so it lasted 29.5 minutes and out of an hour that's a ratio of 0.492 and it was drawing 1771 watts so if we times by 1771 we get 870 watt hours now this is supposed to have well now the ecoflow delta 2 has a 1024 watt hour battery so our usable power our usable storage was 870 watt hours and it's got a nominal value of 1024 so if we divide that 870 by 1024 times it by 100 that gives us 85 percent efficiency for the EcoFlow Delta 2. Not quite as good as some of the competitors at night, which are around 90%, but 85% is excellent. And what I really admired about the Delta 2 was that the power delivery was just constant over that whole half an hour. By the end, even in the last few seconds, it was still giving out the same rock solid power to the fan heater. The same heat was coming out. It didn't tail off like other brands that we've tested. So I think it's time for a roundup summary and some conclusions on the EcoFlow Delta 2. So our tests are complete. What do we make of the EcoFlow Delta 2? Well, firstly, the device itself, I think, is a fantastic looking unit. It's 12 kilograms. It's a fairly heavy weight. And that has a lot to do with the lithium ion phosphate batteries which are not quite as energy dense as standard lithium ion so it gives a little bit of extra weight to still give that a thousand watt hours um, the display is phenomenal it really does show everything and really accurately as well what i really like you get the full clarity on the how much percentage battery you've got left it gives a nice indicator of how long at the current power draw is left and that seems pretty accurate um, and the same when you're charging it, it'll tell you how long to get to fully charged. 
Um, I really like the power meter. Again, most power stations show what power's coming in, what's going out. This one's particularly accurate on the coming in and it was underestimating actually on the out. So uh, that's a, another nice sign. They, the EcoFlow are not over-egging uh, you know, the, the calibration there. In terms of inputs and outputs, it's great. I mean, it can power up to 13 devices in the UK at one time. It's got six USBs. It's got the four AC powers, and then there's a three more uh, 12 volts here. So that's 13 in total. In America, it's 15 because they have six AC powers on the back because of the smaller co connector size. They can fit more on. But even so, 13 is brilliant. You've got this extension pack, which I really like. So if that 1,000 watt hours isn't enough, you can add on another battery and just extend it. But you don't have to buy it all at once. You can sort of pay as you grow. And that's a really nice concept. Well done, EcoFlow. Then you've got the app. I, I, was a, I just didn't really see what the point of the app is, but now that I've tried it out on Wi-Fi and on Bluetooth, you can use the Bluetooth when you're in the wilds with no internet connection or Wi-Fi. Um, it works really well. It, it'll show you how much power's coming in, how much coming out. You can time when it comes on, percentage levels, when you start adding power. I think that's quite useful fiddle factor to have rather than just playing on the screen. And actually some of the stuff you can't actually configure manually, you've got to use the app. Uh, but it works really well. None of the other competitors have that. So with the display, the app, and then we get to the power. My God, this powered everything I threw at it in the house really, from a power drill, to a microwave, to a toaster, to a jet wash. None of the other thousand watt power stations that I've tested were obviously able to do that. But this one, having that X boost, up to 2.7 kilowatts surge power, and then the steady state 1.8 kilowatts, it really can power a lot of stuff. I mean, I didn't test stuff over, you know, two kilowatts. It's not going to work. There's no point doing it like a, a three kilowatt kettle or something. It's just not going to work on this. But I really do like having that 1.8 kilowatts. It just opens up extra stuff for not a lot of extra weight. The Jackery Explorer is 10 kilograms. This is 12 kilograms. You don't really notice the difference. I love the form factor. It just, it's really a good looking unit hide away in your camper van or in the house if you need it in an emergency you know i can't really say too much more about it other than this is a great design ecoflow for a four-year-old five-year-old company 2017 i think you know they're churning out some amazing products and this ecoflow delta 2 is heading right to the top of my recommendation list for power station so We've also got a 400 watt solar panel. I didn't have time to record the performance of that and I'm waiting for some sunshine. So look out for the next video on that. It's a big beast of a solar panel and it will connect into this and help charge it up really quickly. Um, so look forward to that. In summary, I really like the Delta II and um, highly recommend it. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We're trying to grow it. We'll keep delivering more and more of these uh, power station reviews and camper van stuff and general camping videos. So uh, stay tuned, stay with us. We love you, baby. And uh, see you soon, over and out.